Hey, hey, what's up? And welcome back to the Idea Factory. You guys already know me. I'm James Johnson, CEO of the Idea Factory. And today we are on site at a special location. Today we are at Arlington High School or Arlington Middle School, which for the past six weeks has been the temporary location of the Idea Factory. Some of the things that we've been doing here are teaching students about drones and different UAVs. We've been doing some 3D printing. You guys can see like a little Lilo and Stitch I made for a few, uh, I made for a few students here. We've also made a few of the Squid Games masks and different things like that. Primarily what we try to do here is talk about any technological advancement that we can. And then we talk about the different ways that it's affecting our futures and the career fields and job paths that might lead into those different technological advancements. So uh, what we're doing today is we are just here to basically clean up the our Ender 5 a little bit. Like I said, you guys see I got a lot of my tools and stuff down here. These are gonna be the tools of the trade. So I'll go ahead and run through those really quickly so you guys see what you need. Okay, so it's a lot of stuff on the desk here and you guys gotta excuse the noise. It's, it's a little bit loud because I've already turned this one on. The most obvious thing you guys are gonna need, you're gonna need a ton of different Allen wrenches. And if you can get these Allen wrenches that actually have a ball at the end, so that you can do things at different angles, that will help a bunch. You guys are gonna need a ton of these clips. These are the clips that are actually gonna hold the heated bed onto the printer. There's a clip, there's a clip. I'm gonna get those out of there. You guys see I've got a little container of alcohol right here. Uh, the alcohol is actually what we use to kind of wipe down the board after it's all said and done. Let's see what else we got over here. So. This rag is here because we like to use a microfiber rag with the alcohol to make sure nothing sticks to the hot end, to the hot bed here. In case you guys don't know, there's a lot of different oils and soaps and different things on your hands, and the tiniest bit on there can make your print stick. Let's see what else we got. I like to use this right here to help get my print up. This is just basically like a putty knife or something that a drywall guy would use. Let me see. We got a whole different selection of these right here. And if you guys look closely, some of these are rounded off, like toward the end. And some of these are not rounded off. And then my favorite one that I use more than anything else is right, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Favorite ones, these right here. These are, you see mine are a little torn up at the end, but these are great for helping you guys to pull off different supports and things like that. Something else I keep handy and nearby, a little small adjustable screwdriver. I keep a bunch of screwdrivers. I keep different SD cards, micro and mini uh, SD cards so that I can easily pop things in and out of the computer. This right here is a special one. I keep this right here. This is a micrometer. And you actually use this to measure the accuracy of really tiny things. So you guys see I can use that. It will tell me exactly what that is. I'll turn that off. Excuse my ashy hand. Let's see what else we got over here. All right, this is a toolbox specifically for 3D printers. This toolbox here, you guys will see I'll have a bunch of different size gauge needles. And basically what you do with these is you stick them inside your nozzle, right up in there. I'm not gonna touch it because it was just 260 degrees Celsius, but for the most part, that's it. As long as you got a putty knife, I like to keep some of these handy so that I can clean off my nozzle there. This right here is a cord that we would use in case we did not wanna use our SD card. Um, for the most part, I think that is about it. Let's see. Oh, yeah, definitely got some little wrenches here so that um, we can take apart everything we need. But I think as long as you've got a few of these, as long as you've got a micrometer, if you really want to be exact, as long as you've got a few of these to clean out your nozzles, a few of these to clean off your nozzle, um, sometimes it can help to have a really fine pair of tweezers. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you have some angled clippers. Um, a secret for these is to go to the beauty store and get like cuticle clippers. You want to make sure you got clamps. You want to make sure you got a bunch of different 
Allen wrenches, the alcohol, microfiber rag, and then lastly, I actually forgot about this. This right here is cleaner filament. So once you get done running your filament through, you guys see I have the black, the blue filament there. Once you get done, you can enter a little bit of, insert a little bit of cleaner filament in here to make sure that your hot end is completely clear. So what we'll go ahead and do now is take this off, get it cleaned up with a little bit of soap, Dawn dish soap, and then we'll follow up with the alcohol. Then we'll be good to go and get started printing something else. Thanks. Okay, let's go ahead and take this and get it cleaned up. C364 is the code. Make sure you lock it. Scans are bad. All right. Okay, now we're back in the class. This is good and clean. We will clean it one more time with alcohol and then we'll reaffix it to the printer here. Man, you guys will notice with the alcohol, it really doesn't take much, just like one or two squirts. R6. Next up, I'm gonna hit it with this one time just to make sure that nothing is on there. And then I'm gonna follow up with the microfiber rack here. Remember the main thing is I wanna make sure I don't touch that bill plate and leave any of the oils from my fingers on there. Next up, I'm gonna take the clips, clip it back in its face. And I'm doing this just so when it starts printing, it doesn't shield the, the bill plate. It doesn't shift the bill plate anywhere and it prints exactly where I expect it to. All right, so now I've re-added one clip to each side. The next thing I think I'll do is, let's go ahead and get some new cool material or let's go ahead and find out what we're gonna print today. All right, all right, got a cool little example to try to print today. I got this sent to me as an idea from another teacher. So let's see what we can do to get this one here started. I think this will be a pretty cool print. First thing we need to do while we're on Thingiverse here is we need to make sure that we're saving this file to our hard drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Cura. Cura is where we're gonna edit this file. And for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this thing file right here. Download, looks like it's called Catwoman. 
Um, I don't necessarily know which color I'd like to do this Catwoman in. So I know for a fact that I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this blue that we've got here. This is pretty easy. I just take the blue, I wind it back. And as I'm winding it back, I wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. You always wanna make sure that you catch the string at the end and you don't allow it to get intertwined with the other strings. Looks like I've got this one here. So I lucked out on that. All right, so next up, we are gonna swap out that. Let's see what other colors we have back here. Oh, bunch of different colors, bunch of different colors. Let's do something cool with this one. Let's go with something I haven't done in a while. Let's try to do like a glow in the dark cat one. What does that sound to you guys? That is a clear one. Okay, cool. So we selected glow in the dark as the color that we're gonna do our cat one in. I've already went ahead and taken the blue and put that one back in the cabinet. So what I'll do now is I'll get the printer loaded up with this glow in the dark and then I'll probably run one or two test prints just to see how those come out. First thing I do is I am loading it through my filament sensor back here. This tells the printer to stop printing if it detects that you've run out of filament. The next thing I'm doing, and I kind of rigged this part up myself, um, is I am feeding the filament into one of the filament tubes that I turned upside down. And normally your extruder here would be upside down and it would be over in this area. I turn mine the other way around so that I could get as close to a direct drive type printer as I, as I could possibly get. Now the main deal with direct drive is that it has the filament right above your print bed. So in most cases, you won't, have, you won't need nearly as much retraction and then hopefully that'll help with your streaming. But let's go ahead and see what we got here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this temperature up super high. I'm gonna take it to like 260 degrees, which is the highest that this printer goes stock. I'm also gonna take the bed up to 70, which is kind of like my normal printing speed or my normal printing uh, temperature. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the fan. And before I actually put this in there, I'm also going to tell the printer to I'll take that temperature down to about 245. I don't want any of this to leak out. But the next thing we're going to do is we'll tell it to go and self-level. So let me get everything out of the way. And what you guys will see now is that uh, the printer here is going back and forth along the X and Y axis. It's coming to the middle of the print bed. And then the print bed is going down and then up and it's gonna come up to a certain height. Okay. And once it touches this uh, DL touch, which is my automatic bed leveling thing, once it touches that, let's see. All right, now it's gonna go back down. It's gonna come back up, test it again just to make sure it had an accurate reading. And now it's gonna let me know if it's spot on. All right, I think you guys can see it and hear it. My nozzle went right onto the thing. So, that means I'm at the right height, so everything is good so far. And it looks like all I'll need to do from here is move the bed down and run a few test printing. We should be good to go. Thanks. Okay, the next part of process, and we'll do this while the bed is over here leveling. We will go ahead and allow that to measure, and I'm gonna take out my SD card, my SD chip here. We'll take this straight on over to printer here. So we can do it under these. Got it on here. This is where I'm gonna save the file. I am going to 
this out. I'm going to come over to Cure and open up the file now. The file that I just downloaded, Catwoman. All right, let's take a look at it inside Cura. Looks pretty cool. Let's zoom in some. All right, this looks like a pretty good model. Let's take a look at some of our settings we've got here. And some of the things we'll change on this are, uh, I, I don't mind leaving the quality where it's at. The shell looks okay, the infill. Now, I don't want this to be nearly as full. 75% is crazy. I'm gonna go somewhere around uh, 17, no, I'll go to 20%, why not? Let's see, 20% infill. Material. I think that's a good temperature, even though I feel like I may be able to bring that temperature down. Um, just because I've been printing a lot of other things at that temperature that are not a special filament like this one is. Um, do I want to generate any support? Hmm. Let's see, if I generate some support, let's see what this will look like. Yeah, it looks like I'll need some on the hand, under the chin. Uh, not a lot of support needed, but let's slice it and take a look and see what this looks like. And it looks like our printer is done leveling over here. See ya. Everything looks pretty good. I'll run it through that one more time. We'll let that run while we're over here printing on this. All right, it's indicating it's gonna take three hours. Usually that's not as accurate, but let's see what we got here. All right, not bad. We got some support under the hand and the whip. We've got some support under the mid section or under the legs leading up to the crotch. Um, there's also some support under the, is that some support under the boob? I don't know that I've ever seen that. Okay. Oh, uh, there's some support under the chin. Okay, looking pretty good so far. Let's go ahead and we'll save this as Catwoman. We're gonna, uh, Looks like it's 138 um, millimeters high. We'll stick with that. Why not? That was the original one. I'm saving it to my removable drive here. It's saved. I'm gonna go ahead and eject this now. Looks like it's still finishing that up. We'll just give it a second here. All right, so for the past seven to eight weeks, I've been teaching here inside a public school, which is kind of like an innovation school. That's a partnership between the publics and the charters and different things like that. And there are a few things that I have learned about our children. Um, tons of different things. I'm going to make a lot of notes and get back to you guys on this because it sounds like the 3D printer is ready to go to the next status. All right, and here's a little video of what it looks like when the filament starts coming out. I am going to feed about 15 millimeters. You'll notice this start to spin around and then the filament will start to come out of there. So let's see what it looks like.
and keep in mind it's going through that end at 260 degrees Celsius and then when it comes out here it dries up and it gets firm and that's pretty much how it works it just stacks this on top of itself let's just start to reprint what it looks like All right, it said that's got a few hours, so we'll come back and check on this maybe tomorrow. Hey, hey, what's up, guys? So I was editing the video from earlier, and I realized there were a few things I left out that I didn't want to go to bed with still on my mind. So I figured I'd make a quick addendum and put this on the end of the video. Uh, one, the website that I used earlier was Thingiverse.com. That's a free website where creators will go put their latest ideas. Uh, you can always find that online. I'll put the link below to the actual Catwoman uh, figurine that I used. There are also a few other sites like Colts 3D and different things like that where you can go online and pay for 3D models and designs that creators have already made. Uh, when I got to the tools section, one of the important tools that you guys saw there that I didn't mention was the piece of paper. You can actually use that as a feeler gauge when you first calibrate your machine and bring your nozzle down to the uh, print bed. So, um, having the piece of paper is a huge thing. And you wanna make sure that you recalibrate it with that piece of paper. Anytime you make any changes or anytime you move your printer around or anytime you just set it up right out of the box. If you change any major components on the hot end, the nozzle, anything like that, you wanna make sure that you recalibrate that. So keep a piece of computer paper around. Next up, when I was talking about infill, I kinda of blew past this really quickly. But if you understand density, then infill is pretty easy to understand. Most of the plastic objects we have around us are an infill of 10 to 20 or even 30 or 40 percent. Just think of infill as how much plastic is inside your toy. So with most toys being 10 to 20 percent, when I noticed that my infill was 75 percent from a previous project, I took that way down. Uh, you want to make sure you find a number that works for you because it's going to change depending on or it's going to give you varying qualities of how strong it is, how firm it is, you know, how much temperature it can withstand. So different things like that. But more infill means that you're using more filament. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, when I came to the supports, I kind of blew past that really quickly. Supports is basically when the printer prints a piece of uh, plastic just so that it can sort support a higher piece of plastic. So if I'm if I'm printing a figurine that has its arm out here like this, the printer's not going to be able to print the filament for this arm in midair. So it will need to kind of print a base under it, and then you just break that base off at the end. So that's what the supports are. You guys saw that I said there were a few supports under the arm and uh, under the chin, I think. Uh, one last thing I did off camera that you guys wouldn't have been able to see is I took the printing speed down and that's how fast the print head moves as well as how much plastic it lays down. And I also lowered the temperature just a little bit. And that's because I normally print around 215 or 210 degrees Celsius, but I'm usually printing a very consistent plastic blend that doesn't have anything in it. When you start getting into different type of weird filaments, like I've got a wood grain, I've got a few metallic or carbon fiber filaments, and even this glow in the dark filament. When you start getting into different filaments, one, you wanna make sure that you clean your nozzle out, but two, you wanna make sure that you run a few baseline tests just to make sure you're printing at the correct temperature. In the case of the glow in the dark filament, it's like clear plastic melted down, but it's got something uh, called luminous powder sprinkled in it. And that luminous powder is what actually takes in the light and reflects it later. But having the luminous powder sprinkled in there makes the plastic blend a little bit inconsistent. So you want to make sure you run a few tests on, on those. Um, really, that's about it. Those are a few 3D printer basics. And uh, we'll have a lot more episodes about this. But just a little bit about this episode. I got into 3D printing just because it's a really fun hobby. And uh, it's really an emerging technology that I think we should focus on because it's in use in so many places without us knowing. And it's a good chance for a lot of our children to get in on a new technology uh, at the ground level. 
Okay, so one thing I always forget to do is tell you guys how you can support us. The biggest way you guys can support us is to follow us, like, and share our videos on social media. They're under 317 Idea Factory on Instagram. Or to be an even bigger supporter, if you like the ideas and the projects that we're doing and you want to see more of that, and that includes Dad Reads a Bedtime Story, uh, any of the 317 Idea Factory projects, as well as any of the 317 Drones projects, you can always go to patreon.com slash the idea factory and support us there by becoming a ruby, sapphire, emerald, or even a diamond uh, level subscriber. So that's about it. I'll see you guys next week or within the next few days when I do a video about flying drones, another emerging technology.